today we're going to talk about factorials and then we're going to start with permutations, a little bit more of an advanced counting thing. Of course advanced to the general public, but very basic in a discrete math course. So first we need to define a factorial. In case you don't know, if we have uh, a number n, which is a positive integer, then the factorial of n is denoted as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 1. So you multiply the number by the number below and then below that until you get to 1. So as some examples here, we have 4 factorial, which is the same thing as 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 24. 6 factorial is 6 times 5 times interesting thing here, we can just write 4 factorial, since 4 factorial implies 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Why write it all out? We can say 6 times 5 times 4 factorial. We already know 4 factorial is equal to 24, so this is going to be 6 times 5 times 24, which is 120, which 6 times 120 is 720. And the only interesting thing here about 0 factorial is that we just assume this is equal to 1. Hopefully uh, you know factorials now, and this trick right here is very important, that you can write 6 factorial as 6 times 5 factorial, and you write 5 factorial as 5 times 4 factorial, and you keep going down until 2 factorial is 2 times 1 factorial, oops, 2 times 1 factorial, and we just define 1 factorial is equal to 1. So this is a nice recursive definition, and this will help a lot when doing proofs with combinations later. So, let's do an application of this. How many ways can we list 7 numbers without repetition? Well, what does this mean? This means we pick some number out of the 7. So there's 7 choices for the first number. And now we have to cross that random number off. So let's say it was 4. Well now we have 6 numbers left for the second position. Okay. Now we cross off a number, then we have 5 left, and then we have 4 left, and this is going to continue until we have 1 left. So this is the same thing as saying 7 factorial, which is equal to, I think, 49, oops, not 49, 40, 50, 40. 5,040 combinations, or permutations, I should say. So without repetition, you can list 7 numbers in 5,040 different ways. Because the first position has 7 values it can choose from, the second position has 6 values it can choose from, because we can't use the same number twice, so on and so forth. Now what if the first three numbers have to be odd? Well, let's fill these numbers back in. How many numbers in this set are odd? Well, there's four odd numbers to start with. And then, well, we only have three odd numbers left. And then we have two odd numbers left. And at this point, we have knocked out three numbers. So for the fourth position, there's going to be four numbers available, and then three, and then two, and then one. So this set right here, is the number of odd numbers we can choose, and then here right here is the rest. So what is this value? This is going to be 24 times 24. If we do this, which we notice is the same thing as 4 factorial times 4 factorial, it's sufficient just to leave it like that. In fact, going any further is a little bit uh, too much work. I believe that's 576 might be it looks like 576 but I might be wrong but this is the reasoning for that you have to first pick up your odd numbers and then the rest of the numbers after you put the remaining ones back in the pile just because the condition is only the first three numbers must be odd so what we can do is we can say well the number of permutations of length k from a list of n elements 
is n factorial over n minus k factorial, and this is the condition that there's no repetition. This is a lot of times written as p n k, or sometimes it's written as n p k, but this notation is very rarely used, and I think I only saw it in high school. Since then I have not seen anything other than this being used. So I know this is very abstract to say from a list of n elements, but what we're saying is if you have n, n items and you have to order a specific amount of those items that isn't the full length, then you get this formula here. So here's an example. How many ways can we list four numbers out of a list containing seven numbers without any repetition? Let's formulate this. So our total is seven numbers. We have out of seven numbers, we have to choose four. So k is four. k is the amount of numbers we are arranging. So this is p of seven, four which is going to be 7 factorial over 7 minus 4 factorial, which is 7 factorial over 3 factorial. Now we're going to do a trick here. We're going to multiply these numbers out until we reach the factorial on the bottom. So we see a 3 factorial on the bottom, so we're going to go 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. And now these are going to cancel out, which will leave us with 7 times 6 times 5 times 4, which is going to be 42 times 20, which is 840 different ways. So that's pretty cool. If we have a seven number list, we have 840 different ways that we can randomly list four of those numbers without repetition. So that's pretty cool. Now, what if we were given a word base? And we say, how many different ways can we rearrange the letters in base to make a word? Well, we're doing all of them. So this is 4, 4. We have a list of 4 and we're going to arrange 4. So this is 4 factorial over 4 minus 4 factorial, which we know is just 4 factorial over 0 factorial, which is 4 factorial over 1. So when we do the full thing, we kind of just write 4 factorial over it, or if we have p of n, n, this is the same thing as just saying n factorial. So this is just going to be 24, because that is what 4 factorial is equal to. But what if we have the word ball? And this is interesting, because two of these letters are the same letter. Well, we do something interesting here. And we say, okay, we know there's four factorial ways to arrange four letters. And we divide it by the amount of different arrangements that we have that make it the same. So, to put this in perspective, let's list all the letters here. We have B A L and L occurs twice. How many ways can we arrange these L's? We can arrange these L's in two factorial different ways. So if we consider L1, L2, we can also rearrange it to L2, L1. But these are actually indistinguishable. So in all four factorial combinations we have, where we have L1 and L2 at different places, we can switch them and it's still going to give you the same outcome. So we have 4 factorial over 2 factorial, which is the same thing as 4 times 3, which is equal to 12 ways. Don't worry if that didn't make sense to you, we have a lot more examples in this video and the following video. So let's do a bigger example here. How many arrangements can we make with the word databases? So what you should always do first is list all the different letters. So we have a DA, we have a T, we have a B, we have an S, and an E. 
And now we say, okay, well, we have three A's. We have two S's, and I believe that's it. Let me go through this. D-A-T-A-B-A-S-E-S. -A -A -E okay. So, let's number these. A1, A2, A3, S1, S2. So there's going to be two factorial ways to arrange S1, S2, and there's going to be three factorial ways to arrange A1, A2, A3. So, how many letters are there total? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there's nine total ways to arrange all the letters, and all those ways, we have two factorial ways of arranging the S's, and we have three factorial ways of arranging the A's. So we're going to have 9 factorial over 2 factorial times 3 factorial. This is sort of a formula on its own, where if you have k identical items in the bottom, then you divide by that factorial. But just understanding it with the databases example in the previous example, if you can remember what to do here, then you are set for life. Because this is something that happens in a lot of different questions. So here, this is going to be 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. The 3 factorials will cancel, and then we have to divide all over 2 factorial. So we can just rewrite this as 9 times 4 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. And I just reduced the 8 and the 2 there to make it a 4. So this is going to be... 36 times 42 times 20, which is 36 times 840, which is uh, off the top of my head. Let's just do this real quick in my head. It is roughly some number greater than 840. The real number doesn't matter. You can stop right here. That is where you can stop. Actually, if you really don't care, you can stop right there. Depends on the person marking your work. So hopefully that example went okay. I have one more here, which is interesting. This is a visual question, and we say how many paths are there from the point 1, 1 to the point 3, 4 if you can only move right one square or up one square in each step? So here's an example path. Our first one, we go right. Okay. And our second one, we're also going to go right. And then we have no choice but to go up for our remaining two steps. So that is one path. In the second one here, we start off by going up one. And then we go right one. And then we go up one. And then we go up again. And then we go right to three, four. What about in this third go? where we go right one, and then we go up one, and then we go up another one, and then we go right one, and then we go up one. So we have all these different paths. But the thing is, in common, for each path, we have to go two right, and we have to go three up, which means we have to make five total moves. Okay. So this means that we have five factorial ways of getting there, but two of these rights are indistinguishable, and three of these ups are indistinguishable from each other. So we have five factorial over two factorial times three factorial. Does this kind of look like the databases question? What if I were to tell you that this is the same thing as the number of permutations as with the word R-R-U-U-U. -U -U. In fact, what we've done here is we've just transformed the amount of steps needed into a word, a string of characters that list all the possible steps you can do. So this is exactly the same question. This is what I mean when I say you have to extract what you're trying to solve into a question. 
So this is the same thing as we did before with databases. We just happen to have a graph and we're moving from point to point. So when we solve this, we're going to have 5 times 4 over 2 factorial, which is going to be 10. So there's only 10 different paths to do this. And of course, it's really hard to, to draw out each individual path and be like, okay, well, what about this one? Okay, that one's kind of tricky. Okay, well, we also have one where we go up to this point, and then we take a right, and then we go up, and then we go to the right. And it can get very confusing when you have a bunch of different paths there and you don't have enough colors because, oh, which one did I do? Which one didn't I do? Which one do I still need to do? Transforming it into a word that you know a formula for and how to work with. That's a little bit easier. So I will have a whole video full of practice problems coming up next on permutations. So in the playlist, it should be the next video. If you want more examples, check that out. The questions are going to get a lot harder. And we're going to talk about sitting people at circular tables, which is always a fun one because things get a little bit crazy when you start sitting people at tables that don't have an edge. <laughs>